Today, of course, is Pentecost Sunday, the Sunday when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire or in Jesus' breath as the Holy Comforter, as we read in our Gospel from John. The idea of a spirit today, in our common understanding, is one that is somewhat disconnected from the body and, quite frankly, from the cosmos or universe. Think about the ways in which we talk about the spirit. The spirit is sometimes the non-physical nature of some, somebody, right? You say, oh, they have a generous spirit, right? So we can think about the way in which we characterize a person. You might even think about a group in the same way. Rarely do we uh, think about a ghost. Uh, now, when I when I was growing up, of course, that's how we referred to the spirit was the Holy Ghost. My my mother-in-law, who's now since died, used to say, "Whatever happened to the ghost?" That's what I want to know. You know, so this idea has really changed around what the difference and the different ideas here. Regardless, you know, the spirit that we think of is something disconnected, and this is what I want to focus on in my time with you this morning: disassociated with the body. Uh, but this was not the case on the day of Pentecost. This is not how they experienced the day or thought about what happened. Uh, you see, in the ancient world, uh, it was a world where the person was porous, if you will, open to the cosmos that was threatening, invading, enchanted even, and certainly spirited. Moreover, the person was last of an individual as we think about ourselves today, and more a member of a larger body of people. Think about how Paul talks about the body of Christ and we as members, for instance. That's a great example of the way in which they thought of themselves. There was a greater sense, of, if you will, of entanglement between the body and the spirit and the embodying of the world around the person and the wider community members. So there was a sense of a whole versus individuals just gathered, such that what is described in John or in Luke and Acts as Pentecost is a full body experience, a full communal experience. Now, don't run to the charismatic or Pentecostal things that you may be thinking in your mind. It's not where I'm going, <laughs> not at all. But I do want to go a little deeper. Pentecost, you see, is not about uh, an individual experience. It's not about 12 people who just happen to be inhabiting the same space in the upper room. But rather, it is the community of Jesus whose space becomes co-occupied by each other and by God's Holy Spirit. They are engulfed with the breath of God. They are engulfed by fire, but not burn. Think of the bush and Moses in the story, right, of Exodus. They are, they are on fire, but not consumed. They are made whole, if you will, as the image of God's continuing people. They are, as a whole, given a mission. In John, it is a mission of peace, right? So peace be with you, the words he keeps saying upon his resurrection. Peace be with you. And then his final one, love, love my sheep, right? So this is the mission given to them. In John and Luke, it's articulated as a mission of good news, and it is one to be shared. The image in, in Luke and Acts is an old one, an image being sent out in many languages, right? As many kinds of people of God. They are seen to be inebriated. No, it's not important. That's kind of a funny thing, but I think it's evidence of how this was a full embodied experience by the disciples. It wasn't just in their heads, if you will, or coming out of their mouths. The hitch for us, I think, listening today is that we get caught up in the language part of the story. So we miss the reality of the body's gift 
as part of the diversity and challenge that Pentecost is more than fire and more than breath and more than work. It is about our full selves, our full nature and the fullness of the community. Consider for a moment our Anglican Episcopal theology of the word. We believe in a living word, an incarnational word, a word that has form and a body in Jesus, right? So we think of a living word from beyond that becomes part and, uh, of, the, of Jesus himself. So it is mixed together. Anglican theologian Catherine Spickstock helps us understand the nature of words as having being themselves. It's more than just something that we're articulating. Anglican theologian Rowan Williams helps us understand the importance of the body of words and how our bodies are constantly reading how people talk to us, speak to us. Charles Taylor, religious philosopher, helps us understand the nature of porous selves, this idea of communal life, the enjoyed life together, that which is inner and outer are mixed up together, a rejection of me as a subject and everything else as object. Now, all of this fancy theology that I just threw out there is, is really only to help us understand that Pentecost is a bodily event for those who experience on that day and those who were baptized in it today. It is both an individual body event and a corporate body event. It is an individual body event because these persons, the 12, once united to each other, are now united to those to whom they are sent. Both texts reveal this. It isn't that they are breathed upon by Christ, but they breathe in Christ. They intake the same breath that remakes them then. And then they not only have fire upon them, but they speak the language of the Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. So well read, by the way. Normally, a, a lector is tripping up on this day, but well read today. And the Elamites, and so they are the they're seen as the flesh, such men and women as they go out. It's not just that they hear them speaking the same language; it's that they now they have a connection, a bodily connection. Wait, they're speaking; they're of us; they're part of our people. They are signs you see on earth below as the scripture says, of blood and fire. This moves Christianity itself. It moves the way we think out of just being an act of thinking. Christianity is not just about how we think or how we reason, but that Christianity becomes embodied and lived. A feeling, yes, a knowing, yes, but it is about a being, a way of living in the world. You and I are not baptized into a group that kind of thinks alike. First of all, anybody has my job is that's not true, <laughs> right? But that's often the way we think of it, is we, we surround it with words and how we, how we speak and talk. No, we are baptized into the body of Christ. We become one with the body of Christ. His death, the, the baptismal services, his death and his resurrection all at once. This means that as a family, as a church, we embody Christ quite physically. Such that as a body, we ought to consider how to go to the places where Christ is. How to offer the love and care that Christ offers. How to sit at table with sinners and enemies as Christ does. How to forgive those who treat us poorly and may even crucify us in word and action as Christ does. We are made, according to scripture, a new people. A different people than the world offers. At once part of a whole and representative of Christ, but our bodies too, how we live as well as what we say are examples to others of the resurrected Lord. Or are they? All too often, I 
think we want to make Christianity alive so that we can pretend that our bodies and actions in the world are removed from suspicion. But that's not the way it is. Our bodies and our lives betray us. For the sinful, frail, broken people that we are. Our bodies, where they go, who they go with, and what they do, are a revelation of the spirit that is in us, upon us, and a part of us. Breathe in and the fire in our belly. Or not. Pentecost, you see, it is the continuing birthing, rebirthing, I think is better, of God's people who are created to go and whose bodies are crafted. They are made with all of their blemishes without any sense of normalcy. Everybody is crafted to multiply God's blessing in the world. What this means is that as a church, we're not a group of individuals in a room, but a bound body of Christ. And we are the hands and feet and voice and life of Christ in the world. Mysteriously so. But people, when they see us, there is the opportunity for a revelation of God's very presence in the world around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.